Let it be noted that I'm recording this on July 20th, and I've experienced a couple of things in a very short time that both put me in a really foul mood and yet I also want to talk about while having no idea how to approach properly. Some of that stuff I imagine will be addressed in future videos, some even posted maybe later on today. But as a sort of mood cleanser before getting into all that, I actually want to talk about something that makes me really happy and which I feel kind of ashamed for not having talked about on this channel for a long time, which is Doctor Who. Because uh, Doctor Who Series 11 is uh, on its way, and I haven't actually talked even a little bit about this show for my main channel since this season was announced, I don't think, since Jodie Whittaker's announcement as Doctor Number 13. So I kind of just want to do a little... I want to talk a little bit about the Series 11 trailer, how I'm feeling going into uh, Series 11, things I'm looking forward to, things I'm not looking forward to so much. But uh, this is mainly just going to be a lot of positivity and a lot of why I'm personally extremely optimistic going into this season, and only one or two things that I have reservations about. And uh, I should maybe get into first the main thing that I have reservations about, which is just the trailer itself, because uh, sometime last week, the teaser for Season 11 came out, and it was kind of vague. It had this interesting reversal of time thing that I'm not sure if that's purely abstract or if that's going to factor into the plot of the season somehow. I'll get into in a little bit why I don't necessarily think that's bound to happen so much. But uh, that, that piece of advertising had the excuse of being a teaser to being kind of vague. It's just there to let you know that something's coming. The actual trailer for Series 11 that I want to say came out yesterday or the day before, I have a bit more of an issue with in that I really don't think that does a decent job of selling me on the season. I think it's actually kind of similar to the Titans trailer in that it's not really selling you any plot or character. It's selling mood and it's selling a sort of general vibe of adventure, which I appreciate, adventure is why I come to this show, but um, I think there's a lot missing in the Series 11 trailer that should be there. There's no real sense of a lot of the locations we're going to be at, there's a lot of quick cuts that keep you from getting a real sense of where things are going to be taking place. There's no creature designs, which is a big downer for me, because Doctor Who is so associated with the designs of its Monsters of the Week. And if I'm correct, something that I've heard that uh, is an aspect that makes me really look forward to this season is that we're not getting any returning creatures. All of the creatures and all of the antagonists of each episode are going to be entirely brand new creations for this season and it's such a big missed opportunity for me that they don't showcase any of that if they really just want to keep it a surprise or they're saving it for a potential other trailer i can maybe sort of understand that but this combined with last week's teaser are really the big foot forward and going strictly off this trailer, I don't think this is the type of thing that's going to grab a lot of new viewers because, again, they're just really vague about what exactly is in store. And that, I think, is the main reservation that I have. But uh, the trailer, or rather like my hype for Series 11, was kind of salvaged by more behind-the-scenes stuff, which is to say comments from the new showrunner, Chris Chibnall, and just some some basic facts that we now know about this season, which is kind of like my dream come true Doctor Who season, it sounds like it's shaping up to be. Uh, I suppose I should also mention, just because they were really the only thing that was featured in the trailer heavily at all, is the cast. We've got Jodie Whittaker, whose accent I'm not sure I'm feeling, but uh, I'm sure I'll acclimate to it. 
and three companions on the TARDIS this time around. It's a... it's a... I'm, I'm, I'm sort of interested to see how this video comes out, because I haven't talked about Doctor Who in a while, and I wonder how many people, if any, are even gonna bother watching this who maybe aren't familiar with Doctor Who. If so, if I can perhaps take it upon myself to sell them on this new season the same way that I'm being sold. But anyway, the way I feel is we've got three companions for the Doctor's Travels, which is typically, they limit it to one or two, usually one, so that they have some kind of dynamic. And, I don't know, some people, that is other people's reservation, is that they're worried about there being too many people in the TARDIS, because there's precedent for uh, doctors in the past, like decades and decades ago, having companions in you know, numbers of three or four, and that can be really, really overwhelming sometimes. I am personally not worried about it, because I've always kind of liked the more full TARDIS dynamic, and I think three or four is really the ideal number to keep it at. Especially because, so often, Doctor Who plots involve characters getting split up from each other. I think it's really good to have a dynamic of, you can have pairs, you can have three or one, you can have different combinations of characters, and if one of the companions doesn't sit so well with people, then you have two other ones to potentially fall back on. Giving yourself three different characters and giving yourself that many opportunities to have a character that really lands so long as the Doctor themselves is still likable and engaging and fascinating and all that stuff, is, I think, sort of setting themselves up for uh, a win-win scenario here. Again, I could be proven wrong, and if one of the companions ends up being not as likable a character and that really detracts from the viewing experience, I'll mention that. There is also the fact that Chibnall himself is showrunner, of course, and I've... I've done a long ago, like at the beginning, the birth of this channel, I did some rather poorly edited and not great sounding uh, reviews of each of Chibnall's previous Doctor Who episodes, and those videos have aged really poorly. There were extenuating circumstances behind why some of them sound the way they do, and I had never edited anything before, and those are all really hard editing jobs, but Believe it or not, I stand by those videos, and the thoughts expressed in those videos are really how I feel about each of those episodes still, for the most part. And so, outside of just straight up redoing and remastering those videos with the same scripts, which I don't necessarily think is worth the time, I just recommend that you go back and look at the Doctor Who reviews that I've done previously, and uh, I can link each of them in the description. Because I really do think it's worth it if you haven't watched some of my earlier stuff to go back and look at those to see what kind of headspace I'm still in regarding Chibnall as a writer and his potential for showrunner. And my big thesis across those videos was pretty much that Chris Chibnall is kind of a guy that I trust to make the Doctor Who season I've always wanted. And that sounds exactly like what we're getting. Because the Doctor Who season I've always wanted really is just a assorted collection of completely standalone episodes. I'm fine with Doctor Who having a central plot arc, but it's really not a show that I think needs one. And for the most part, with some exceptions, I want to say maybe at most half the time it's been an exception, the central plot arc... The central plot arc of a Doctor Who season has always kind of been the weakest thing about it. Where I maintain that the weakest thing about Doctor Who Series 3 is the handling of the main plot of the Master and how that's all resolved in the three-part finale. And I maintain that uh, the Missing Planets arc is probably the weakest thing about Series 4 in that it's handled really well up till the finale in both cases, but then the finale, I think, kinda screws the pooch on the landing. Series 6 and 7, I think, both suffered from how they handled their arcs. Series 8 and Series 10 both had arcs that were 
sort of like just poorly handled a lot of a lot of mystery box people who uh, are familiar with the term mystery box is like sort of real lazy arc storytelling doctor who falls into that trap a lot of just presenting a plot point in the same plot point in some sort of different fashion across multiple episodes over and over until it's finally paid off at the end of the season. And there are some exceptions where, like with Series 5 and to a lesser extent Series 9, the central thing, the central thrust of the, the series as a collection sort of plays uniquely into the plots of certain episodes. For the most part, that's not what Doctor Who does, and it really has kind of soured me on the idea of needing to have all the episodes connected in some loose or tight way by by a central narrative. And so we're not doing that this season, by all accounts. Each episode, according to Chibnall, is going to be entirely standalone, and that's really what I want, where... Because that way, if an episode is bad, or if there are elements of an episode that don't work, you can sort of just... You can almost treat Doctor Who like an anthology, where, alright, that episode was kind of a dud, but the next one is guaranteed to be something different. It's guaranteed, it's guaranteed to be a new setting, a new conflict, new concepts being explored. And that's really kind of why I come to this show, is every episode you get to see something new. And even if the structure of the plot is a familiar thing, because one thing that I will say in kind of addendum to my thoughts on Chibnall as a writer is that he doesn't often structure his episodes uniquely, but the central concept is always kind of, oh, I can't believe I didn't think of that, or oh, that's just a really fun idea. And so, I'm down for an entire season of episodes like that. Where, for me, the standalone, non-arc-related episodes of this show have always been the more interesting ones. And thankfully, they make up most of them. But I'm really... I'm genuinely, positively excited to see what a Doctor Who season looks like that doesn't feel the need to lean on recurring plot points. Again, this is sort of a tiny bit soured by the fact that the trailer doesn't really show you what you're in for. We're hearing that we're going to be in for a lot of new, distinct stuff, and that Chibnall wants a sense of variety, and I really appreciate that, but I wish that that had been conveyed more in the trailer, because that's what most people are going to see. Most people aren't going to look at Chris Chibnall interviews like I do. But anyway, Chibnall also mentioned sort of a changing of the way that the show is written, where, up until now, since, I want to say since the inception of this show, up until last year, the way that stories got written is either someone would come up with an idea for an episode, or the ideas for the episodes would be sort of decided in advance, and each individual writer would get given an episode to do as an assignment, or a multi-part story to do on assignment. And the big thing was that that also is kind of a contributing factor to the you, you don't really know what you're going to get each week. And uh, I'm not sure how this change is going to be reflected in the quality of individual episodes, but they're changing the way that the episodes are written and they're making it more of a American-style writer's room thing. So I'm not sure if we're still going to have you know, episode title by individual writer as kind of a... kind of a, a standard, but... I don't know, part of me, if that's gone, is going to miss the idea of getting, like, a very distinct writerly voice from episode to episode. But another part of me is going to say, you know, some of those writerly voices weren't always uh, great. So it's going to be interesting to see an uh, entire writer's room of new blood, basically, plus Chibnall trying to create different feeling stories across a season. So that's a change that I'm not entirely sold on, but I don't really have any apprehensions about. We'll see how it plays out. 
and whether or not it sticks past series 11. Uh, and I guess on the note of writers, I should mention as a sort of last summary point, the, uh, the writers who we know for a fact are not returning for this series, and that includes Stephen Moffat. There's not going to be any more Stephen Moffat. He's decided that he's going to bow out, which, you know, I completely agree with and understand. I was maybe curious about how Stephen Moffat would have written after having been showrunner, writing under another showrunner again, but... Like Chris Chibnall, I feel that Stephen Moffat is a guy who had a sort of sometimes subtle, sometimes not so subtle narrative through line running across his episodes, even back when he was sort of a writer under the Russell T. Davies era. And I think Stephen Moffat has really said all he has to say thematically, character-wise, about this show and about this character. So, I don't really know if he had anything left in him to contribute after, I'd say, getting burnt out on a couple of Doctor Who seasons. So, it, it's kind of nominally sad to see Moffat go, but not really. Who I'm really not sad to see go, and this is gonna sound mean, but I've made my opinion on his writing in the past clear, I think, is Mark Gatiss, who is kind of uh, Stephen Moffat's partner in crime on Sherlock, and has written a lot of consistently mediocre Doctor Who episodes. And again, I feel like maybe said everything he had to say, and was writing episodes that were, unfortunately, increasingly shallow and unengaging with time, to where by last season and the season before that, he was writing some of my least favorite episodes just of the show, period. And so, I don't know, maybe Gatiss needs to take a break from Doctor Who for a little while, or maybe he's just not the type of person to be writing this show, and honestly, his presence, for me, isn't going to be missed. Presences that I am going to miss, though, are the fact that there there's also going to be no Sarah Dollard, and there's going to be no Jamie Matheson, or Matheson, I really hope I got that right at least once. But, uh, yeah... Math uh, Matheson wrote some of my favorite episodes from the past couple of years. He wrote Mummy on the Orient Express and Flatline. He wrote Oxygen from last series, which uh, I wasn't so hot on Oxygen. But Mummy and Flatline are two of my favorite episodes. And they are, ironically enough, I feel like Chibnall-ish episodes in that they're completely standalone. They tie into each other, kind of but they, at most, have cursory reference to stuff that's been going on, but the main meat plot of the episode... But the main meat plot of the episode is its own thing, and it's a really fascinating, unique concept. And so, if, Ma if Matthewson just doesn't have anything that he wants to contribute to this season, then that's fair, and I was kind of looking forward to what a collaborative effort from Matheson and potentially Dollard and Chibnall might look like, and Dollard has also written a couple episodes that I think are, at worst, okay, and at best, really fun. They wrote Face of the Raven, which I think was a really decent concept for an episode marred by the fact that it was kind of part one of a three-part story in disguise. So it didn't really get to be its own story, it was just kind of set up for stuff that would happen later. But uh, then they wrote Thin Ice for Series 10, and that was, I think, one of the better episodes that season. And uh, yeah, it's sad. Less sad to see Moffat and Gatiss not contribute this season, and more sad for Dollard and Matheson not being around. But uh, there's always next season, and hopefully Series 11 should float on just fine without them, you know, so. Finally, I want to talk about just, I suppose, the main point of the video, really, which is what you guys can expect from this channel going forward about this show specifically. And also, since I'm talking on that note, I might as well take the moment to uh, plug, because I know that most people who follow me haven't been keeping up with it, but on my channel, I have a playlist set up of discussion videos about Doctor Who that have been going on for a little while now, I want to say a year or two, with my friends Lucy and Edward on Lucy's channel, Red Lightning. And so, those videos 
I really enjoy making. We've sort of been going through Doctor Who and the spin-off series Torchwood starting back with Series 1 from 2005 and we're slowly making our way catching up to now. I'm not entirely sure what the plans are for the three of us regarding Series 11 when it starts, but uh, I'm going to provide a link to that playlist in the description of this video and I really want you guys to check that stuff out. I'm actually really proud of some of the discussions that we get up to regarding episodes and uh, I definitely think that you should subscribe to that channel if you want more content from me without it necessarily being this channel you know me talking about one of my favorite shows I really think you guys would enjoy that but as for this channel the plan for right now just because of how things are sort of stacked in terms of other stuff that I want to review and like I mentioned in the previous video wanting to do more scripted content I'm going to as series 11 is going on do what I did with series 10 which is unscripted videos of just me alone discussing how I felt about each episode, which should be released the night of, or at most the night after that episode is aired. And that'll just be my really uh, fresh thoughts on each story until we get to the end, where I will then attempt to do what I did for last series also, which is a scripted, edited look back at the entire season episode by episode, see how my thoughts might have changed, and how I think it stacks up overall as a season of TV. But the main attraction, I think, is going to be my weekly opinions on the episode as they come. So, that is something that I want you guys to look forward to, because I think it's going to be really cathartic to finally get back to talking about this show again after a year of pretty much nothing. And, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to Series 11. I hope it doesn't let me down, and I hope that, uh, now we've had enough time to get over the Jodie Whittaker backlash. That you guys will watch along with me. And even if you're new to this show, I imagine just because there's going to be so many new things in it that it'll be a pretty okay jumping on point. And I'm really interested to see what people who are really fresh to this show will think of certain episodes. So I want you guys to uh, keep up with that, subscribe if you haven't already, so that you can keep up with what I what I do Doctor Who related, and discuss that show with me, either on this channel or on the Red Lightning channel, because, I don't know, it's, it's a show that I don't get the chance to really talk about enough in the way that I want to, so here's hoping that things, you know, look, look nice and bright and shiny for that in the future.